Welcome to the Selling Excellence Podcast for business executives. We all know B2B selling isn't getting any easier. And what's worse, it's getting more expensive. Hello, I'm Tim Geiser, your host and partner at Octus IQ, a selling excellence as a service company. Our goal today is to give you insights on how you can turn your sales force into a company asset. We hope you enjoy. Well, on today's episode, we have a real special guest, Scott Tricker from Olson. It's a national engineering consulting firm. Welcome, Scott. Glad you're here. Glad to be here, Tim. Looking forward to it. You know, it's it's kind of interesting, you know, getting ready for this. We had never really done these podcasts before, right? We were talking about that. Yeah, I'm a total rookie. Yeah. I well, listen to a ton of them, but I've never never been on the mic. Well, here you are. I mean, this is, ex- and you know what? This is my second time. So how exciting is that? You've reached veteran status. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am battle worn, as they would say. That's right. Well, we're glad you're here. Yeah, um, thank you. And, uh, you know, I think just to kind of set it up for the audience, and I guess they would call this character development. <laughs> so tell me just a little bit about you what you do, and we'll take it from there. Yeah, so I've, uh, you know, had a, a long career in sales. Uh, I've been doing that for well over 20 years. Uh, currently, over the last, you know, eight years, I've been privileged to uh, really lead and direct sales for Ed Olson, and we're a, a large engineering and consulting firm. Uh, and so, <clears throat> as, as mentioned, just um, really spent my entire career in sales and transitioned into leadership over, over the last number of years and uh, been real fortunate to be part of a great company. Well, and you've got, you've got a kind of an interesting past, right? Like one, you worked for Kubli, you know, at Landscapes <laughs> Unlimited, right? That's kind of where you cut your teeth. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I joined, uh, I was with a previous company. There was a large golf course construction uh, firm that was a preeminent leader in the industry and great organization uh, founded by an entrepreneur and and owned by a family and still to this day, very, very successful. I was glad to be part of it. And the reason I bring that up because uh, we've played golf together and uh, dear audience, he is a heck of a golfer. Um, (laughs) In addition to that though, I mean, at Olson, you've had an incredible run. Right in the last eight years, yeah. you've helped double the size of that company, and that's been pretty exciting for you. Yeah, you know it's it's rewarding uh, to be part of an organization that's very uh, growth oriented. Um, I'd like to believe that our group, my team that I lead, has had a you know a part in it. We're we're not the sole <laughs> author of the growth, but um, yeah, we've seen some pretty tremendous uh, opportunity uh, over the last eight years. I mean, when I joined. Uh, to today, we've we've doubled in revenue, we've doubled in uh, employee size, and I think the probably the most gratifying part of all that is, you know, we've grown it while staying aligned to our mission, yeah. which is really uh, really about you know giving our men and women that are the engineers and the scientists uh, who really desire to work on great projects and be challenged. Uh, just to be able to help, you know, give them that opportunity as well as, uh, you know, our, our main credo is to really work in our communities and to leave them better than we found them. And so the growth's great, um, but it's really the opportunities uh, that it's created uh, over the last eight years for people as well as the communities we serve and the clients that we serve has, has been a it's been a real, real joy uh, to be part of. Yeah, it, it, is a, it is a fabulous organization. And I guess, you know, if you were to give a little bit of insight. You know, how have you kept your culture? What has been that true north for an organization like Olson that has done so well and still kept true to itself? Well, I I, I think it goes back and a lot of, I mean, I, I give a lot of kudos to the senior leadership team that, you know, years ago when they started out uh, creating a growth plan, <clears throat> up and beyond just putting a figure on a piece of paper right, and saying right. this is what we're <laughs> what we're wanting to do, I think the thing I was most impressed with, and I've seen it through this this last eight years, is um, they they've done a very good job. Uh, really, first off, asking, well, why are we doing this? And even more of like, well, why why do we exist? And I think for us, you know, when you look at our company's tenants, the very first uh, reason that that we're really here as a company is we exist for our employees. And our, our second, uh, you know, tenant is really, you know, we're, we're dedicated to serving our clients. But I think going back to growth, when, when you're taking an approach that you're growing for each other um, and you've got a mission, once again, of we want to work on more challenging projects. We want to be able to make an impact in the communities that we serve so that truly we, we leave them better than we found it. That helps you make some pretty... Um, 
tactical decisions when uh, large you know opportunities are at stake, and you know being able to have that mission. Uh, always in front of you to say, "Hey, is yeah. this really aligning with with really what we set out to do?" It it really empowers you to run a business much more than just a number. Yeah, kind of gives us some soul, doesn't it? It does. <clears throat> kind of yeah, gives you purpose. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, when you talk with all you know people in your position and, and across almost any successful organization, that culture. As I say, you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? Yeah, and it's so true. It's true, and especially when you live it the way you've done. Well, so I think we're kind of to that point where the character development is there, yeah. <laughs> except for one thing. And that is, there, our audience doesn't know this, but I know this about Scott. Scott really was in school and studied history. So you're kind of a history guy, right? <laughs> I, I, I was, yeah. I, I originally went to college, um, you know, was a history major, graduated with a, a degree in history. Uh, and my, my original intention was to go into teaching. That's, uh-huh. that's what I wanted to do. And uh-huh. Life, uh, life, and and other decisions just kind of drove me differently, and got into business and sales. But uh, yeah, always been a learner. Uh, always enjoyed, uh, especially even you know now, uh, recreationally reading and studying about you know history with probably a, a larger focus at times on American history with uh, additional focus on military history. Oh, so okay. it's, uh, it's something I, I enjoy. You bet. Well, I, I mean, I really identify that. You know, I I didn't go to school for sales or business, really. I mean, I was a musician for two years. You you probably don't know that. No. Yeah, so I I kind of found my way in. And, you know, having a sense of the arts and the liberal arts kind of gives you an interesting perspective on on how to, you know, look at business, but also how to interact with customers and Mm -hmm. how to... How to really shape your your point of view and lead in a different way, mm-hmm. and you've, you've demonstrated that. But but here's my question. Okay, so your your history kind of foundation. How do you parlay that into what you do, and and how does how does that really shape the the things that that you put as priorities in the role you have at Olson? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'd probably say there's there's two two areas specifically just off off mind here that that kind of uh, arrived at the top one is <clears throat> i think it's a pretty obvious statement but obviously history is really about you know not just learning facts um from the past but really trying to interpret them and reapply them into the present and so what what can you learn from past success past failure um and and really reapply that mm-hmm. into your situation so mm-hmm. i i think with sales you know one of the things that you know, I, I very much believe is, you know, sales is a tactical business. Um, it's, it's not, when you really look at it, the, the most successful sales organizations are, in my opinion, are ones that uh, have a strong uh, set of discipline, uh, but also are keenly aware uh, from their past uh, to u- utilize, you know, hey, when things have gone well, uh, but also probably more importantly, <laughs> when there's been failure, uh, to, to really analyze that and, you know, not to stay stuck on it. But, you know, I, I guess, you know, you and I have talked in the past is I think one of the key takeaways in failure or in loss, which is a huge part of selling, is, is to really make sure that you're, you're taking away what, well, what did you learn from that? Um, because if there's anything that, you know, history is, is shown is that it does repeat itself. And the, the less that we can repeat the same error time and time again in sales and learn from it, coach, coach our team with it, um, it, it can certainly make us better. Yeah, you know, those, those losses, for some reason in our profession, just stick with you. Um, kind of a parallel to that is, is I was talking to a, a Hall of Fame um, receiver, um, who played, uh, you know, college ball, Division One, mm-hmm. very successful. And he, he said to me, he goes, you know, it's funny. He goes, I look back on my career, which was, what, 25 years ago. He goes, I can remember every loss, every every loss. It still sticks with me. And he goes, but the wins I, I don't remember as much. It's kind of crazy, isn't right. it? Right, right. And that, you know, that is part of it is I, I do think, um, once again, going back to, you know, analyzing history, Sometimes, um, you know, beyond just celebrating the kind of that emotional, that immediate emotional reaction to winning a big project, you know, in our world, that it's, you know, if you look at some of the more successful athletes that you just brought up, I mean, the winning and losing is just a byproduct of process. Right. You know, are you practicing? 
Um, are you doing the right things? Do you have the right structure in place, the right discipline? And the winning and losing will take care of itself. Um, and that's that to me is going back to, you know, structure and, and just having a really good organized system and also, you know, utilizing that history of, you know, what's been your path and what can you interpret from that and reapply into today is it's, it's a, it's a very relevant business practice that, uh, I, I see top performing sales yeah. organizations, in, in, you know, right. instituting. Yeah. So, okay. So here I'm going to, I'm going to take you to your history and your, yeah. your core as a teacher, put us, put this in some sort of maybe military, um, parallel of, you know, what is your job? What do you have to do as that, that sales leader within an organization? Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so if I was to sit down and have a conversation with our CEO or a CEO about, you know, what, what is my role and what, yeah. what should you expect of me, mm-hmm. you know, kind of taking a little bit of, t- uh, takeaway from my love of history. I, I go back to, you know, the allied invasion, uh, of Normandy, which was a game changing battle in our nation's, in in our world's history. Right. Right. And so you had someone like Dwight Eisenhower, who was, you know, the allied commander, he's, you know, he's overseeing the big picture, much like a CEO. So I look at that as, as the CEO and, and I look at business development and myself as the leader is, you know, I'm, I'm really his ground force leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, very much so. Yeah. yeah. And so the, I, I really look at there's three things that if I was to look at a CEO and say, here's what I think you should really expect from, from our organization to be successful. Um, they're really this. is The first one is, no question, um, I am responsible for procuring and communicating accurate and reliable information. And, you know, for in the business world, I mean, for me, it's it's pipeline it's sales forecasting, it's market trends, it's things like threats, disruptions, and just even, you know, competition reporting. And, you know, just to pause again and look back and say, well, how's that relevant to the analogy of D-Day? I mean, there was so much information that Eisenhower had to rely on many others to go out and gather in the field. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm down to weather reports. Right. We were talking about that. Yeah. It was a go, no go became so critical. There was just a window. Yes. Right. And you know, he depended upon, you know, the, the intelligence that was gathered out in the field to, to really make some very critical decisions for the business. So, you know, once again, I, I think that that's a, that's a huge part of our job is the CEO is depending upon our group to really provide, you know, not just the wins and losses, but information. Yeah. It has to be reliable. What are customers saying? Absolutely. How are they feeling about this? What is the, you know, what are the barriers? Why did they say yes? Why did they say no? All of those things, that's critical information to run in the business. Yeah. So that's definitely one. Um, and I, I think that a CEO should expect that and demand that out of their sales organization. Yeah. I, you know, the next thing is, <clears throat> you know, we're a people business and I look at, you know, the CEO to say, you know, I, I'm in charge of building, leading, and developing a team that aligns with the company's mission and values. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think, you know, simply it's, you asked me earlier about how have we been successful? And, you know, growth on its own is, is to me, is pretty unfounded if, if it's not aligned with the company's mission and values. And, you know, those, those two buzzwords there get, I think, overused a lot. But I go back to, uh, put it simply, is we can have great growth, uh, but if we have a team that is lacking character and trust, uh, it's not representing uh, the the values of, for instance, Olson, uh, or you know, operating in a in a business manner that is not helping our brand. Well, then we're sunk. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, once again, you you go back to history. You know, there's not only the what we need to do, which is we want to go invade this beach. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's the why. And if you think about it, I mean, it, this wasn't just an American effort. This was, you know, the United States. This was Canada. This was France. This was the Brits. I mean, there's so many, the Australians, there's so many different countries, uh, different military strategies, different individuals. They all had to rally around a why and come to an arrival point to say, beyond the what, 
we're, we're all in agreement that this is the mission and this is why we're doing this. Well, and I love what you're talking about there because, you know, one of the shifts that has happened in sales over the last really 15 years is that <clears throat> the individual seller isn't carrying the whole load. They're really orchestrating a team. Right. That's right. You have solutions architects, you have project managers, you have implementation people, you have all kinds of people. You're, you know, you're you're conducting quite an orchestra and alignment right. becomes even more critical. Right. Absolutely. Especially in our business. I mean, as I've shared with you, you know, as business development, my team, you know, we, we are really at the end of the day, we are here to help the company get positioned uh, in front of clients. But ultimately, you know, the men and women that work at Olson, you know, the 1600, you know, scientists and engineers, they're ultimately the ones that have to carry the water mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to make the, the, the needs, the dreams, the realities of a community or client happen. That that's, that's really when, when the rubber meets the road. Yeah. And so it is, it's very critical. And so that mission, you know, having recruiting the right people, uh, from an integrity and value standpoint to just being aligned as a business development saying we're going after these certain initiatives that I have perfect alignment with the entire leadership and, and employee base of the company. It's critical. Yeah, so that's that's one and two. What's the yeah, third thing? Th I'd, say, I'd say the third thing, um, you know, just kind of going back to when I've looked at, you know, successful, you know, military operations, the things I take take back from it is, you know, there's there's definitely a culture of discipline and accountability that's that's really been blended in, and there's that's no different than a good sales organization. You know, I, uh, you know, a few thoughts here that I have is, you know, if I'm looking at a, a CEO, is you know, to me, sales is a very tactical operation, and it's a process based science. Um, you know, as I said earlier, the the results, if we don't have good process in place, we already know what the results going to be. Yeah. Um, right. But, you know, for us, you know, we have to deliver, you know, meticulous documentation of activity. There's got to be uh, a lot of, you know, key stuff with pipeline and, you know, just managing our business is as important as winning. I mean, our competition, when I've noticed when we're winning at a high level, we're just doing it better. Um, you know, we're, you know, the idea of being sloppy and unorganized is it's just a proven loser. So I go back to even point one. It's so important for us to have discipline as a business development unit to be documenting, owning information, relaying accurate information. One, to relay up to the CEO, but two, for us to make decisions. And if we don't have good information, you know, we're not able to make timely decisions on which projects we're going to pursue and which projects we're going to leave. And, you know, when I look at that, you know, I, I, I often compare it going back to military uh, history is, you know, wars are a series of battles. And you're, you're really trying to work towards winning a series of battles. And the, the biggest thing that if you look at the greats that have you know, been successful, they have shown a high propensity to identify when something is a skirmish yeah, <laughs> and right. when something's a battle. Right. And ultimately to figure out which battles are real and beyond that to say, here's the ones that we're actually going to have a chance at winning. And here's the ones that we're flat out going to never fight and walk away from. Right. And it all goes back to how do you collect information and are you detailed <clears throat> and do you have discipline? Yeah. I mean, so the discipline, if you use, use your analogy, I mean, there's books written about the training that Eisenhower and his leaders went through to make sure that those teams were ready. Right. You know, the, everything from the pilots to the ground forces to the people who ran, you know, and, and brought the troops over on ship and how they trained going up and down ropes to the detail of that, right? To the detail. I mean, there was just, you know, it's a really, really good analogy. You know, so so essentially, I guess you could kind of say you're you're like Eisenhower's Omar Bradley, right? I mean, that's, in, in the in the role in business, and that's right because if if you look at you know like I'm privileged to lead 17 individuals nationally for our company, and what's our biggest challenge? It's time. Yeah, it's right. time, and if you don't have good discipline and be able to look at accurate information, you have to make decisions for the best of the company to say, these are the best opportunities for us to move forward that are winnable. And then you got to have the guts to say, even though this is a big number 
it looks really enticing to say we are never going to win that. Yeah. For for many reasons and walk away. Yeah. And that's to me is it's it's constantly one of the biggest challenges of a good sales organization is is to really be able to stand up on its own and say we're going to walk away from decisions that we're never going to win in the first place. Yeah. That, and that goes back to history, learning, understanding, getting better, right? <laughs> it sure does. Right? And so, sure so does. you know, Scott, I, thanks so much for, you know, joining us here today. I mean, I'm going to recap this because this is really important, right? As, as the Omar Bradley, and for those out there who don't know who Omar Bradley is, uh, look it up. He a, a very impressive uh, field commander for the Allied Forces. But, you know, you got to have accurate and reliable information that's got to come up to the to the organization of the CEO. You got to have the right mission and values, right? You got to be aligned in what those are and where you're going as a team. And then you got to have discipline and accountability. You do those three things, what happens? You you do what you did. You, you and the, the team at Olson doubled the business, right? We're going to take the beach. It's going to take the We're beach. We're going to take the beach. Yes. There it is. There's the catchphrase of the day. Take the beach. I like that. Yeah. Scott, thanks a lot for being here today. You bet, Tim. All right. Been fun. Yeah, sure has. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Selling Excellence Podcast for business executives. I hope you've gained some insight on how to turn your sales force into a company asset. Now, don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information on what we do at Octus IQ or to schedule a discovery call, visit our website at www.octusiq.com. Until next time, this is your host, Tim Geisert, and a partner at Octus IQ.